estimated that 67,000 women die in India every year from cervical cancer, the highest number in the world. The age standardized incidence rates in India are now the highest in all of South Asia. We still see a number of advanced cervical cancer cases in our clinics. Though cervical smears have been singularly responsible for reducing deaths due to cervical cancer, many women are still deprived of this as there is no organized cervical screening program existing in our country. There is also a shortage of trained manpower in terms of both cytoscreeners as well as trained cytopathologists for screening cervical smears. In India, gynecologists have the highest responsibility for screening cervical cancer, which is still opportunistic. India and the South Asian region contribute a third of the global burden of cervical cancer. In fact, the Indian government has given highest priority for cervical cancer control and prevention in its national cancer control program. And a number of researchers, clinicians, and epidemiologists and health workers have done remarkable studies in cervical cancer prevention, early detection and control in India and in the South Asian region, uh, which have given remarkable leads for global control of cervical cancer, particularly in the context of low and low middle income countries. The government of Uttar Pradesh, the biggest state of our country, has started a comprehensive women health program in which detection of cancer cervix is uh, an important part. They have taken the WHO guided uh, VIA, that is visual uh, inspection after acetic acid application and treating by cryotherapy, that is via and cryo as the screen and treat program for the population. They have also rolled out vaccination program in 28 districts already. In India, HPV type 16 is found to be exclusively very high. We are in the process of developing indigenous HPV vaccine which will be cost effective as well as going to have therapeutic values. Rural women in India hardly ever visit a doctor in their lifetime. We from the Indian Society of Preposcopy realize this and are taking cervical screening to the doorstep of these women by organizing cervical screening camps in villages of Delhi. An effective one-step treatment for these women needs to be worked out. In India, we have a large number of gynecologists, pathologists, other clinicians who are interested in cervical cancer screening, cervical cancer prevention, both vaccination as well as screening. A lot of interest has been generated over the last few years, especially because new technologies have come up. India having, the, having brought to the world the first um, data on a mortality impact in cervical cancer screening really deserves the international community to come here. There is a huge amount of enthusiasm, there's a lot of work being done, and there are a lot of people on the floor who are interested in doing screening. The idea to make Indian Society of Colposcopy and Cervical Pathology was conceived in 2005. The society became fully functional in 2006. Initially, we had just seven to eight members. And as of now, we have more than 250 members. We also developed a training program for our members. And this training program is for one month. There is a profusion of tests available for screening. VIA, HPV testing by hybrid capture, HPV genotyping, HPV RNA, etc. But colposcopy will remain the gold standard in the years to come. Colposcopy is easy to learn and perform. With the video colposcope, you can get trained in a really short time. I would encourage everybody to come to India in 2020 for the next IFCPC meeting. I'm sure it's going to be an exciting meeting. Uh, the science will be excellent. The burden of cervical cancer in this country uh, is uh, significant and the efforts that the Indian society are making to reduce that burden are huge. I think this will bring a unique opportunity for everybody but also to uh, experience the urgent need for cervical cancer control in this country 
and to see what is being done to help with that. I urge you to uh, come and join us in, in 2020. We know it will be an exciting Congress. It will be very relevant to uh, all parts of the world and it will be a great opportunity to travel and see a beautiful part of the world. I have been to India many times. The hospitality is unparalleled and the people are absolutely lovely. And I can think of no better place to host the IFCPC. So I would encourage everybody to make an attempt to come to what promises to be one of the best IFCPC meetings. Uh, talking from the Hyderabad Convention Centre, uh, it has a very good convention centre with attached hotels and there are a number of nearby hotels which gives the best facilities uh, for a nice convention. Hyderabad has been a fantastic city, a fantastic event. Transport from all parts of the globe is easy and we've actually got a direct flight from the UK to Hyderabad again. The convention centre and the hotel next door are a short bus journey from the airport. This Congress has probably got between three and a half and four thousand delegates. With enchanting diversity, the Indian subcontinent has snow-dusted mountains, sand-washed beaches, tranquil temples, feisty festivals, and is home to many religions in the world. Be it a thrilling wildlife safari or a simple walk in the Himalayas, this country has the world's most exciting travel destinations. India beckons, India calls. <laughs>